How many presses do you know of that can do that? Well, life never seems to go as planned. <laughs> it's been three weeks since I uploaded the making of this press die, and I thought in a few days I would upload the next one as I have all the parts cut out. All I had to do was finish it up real quick, do that over the weekend, get the next video cranked out, right? Well, unfortunately, I have been crazy busy with work. I've been out trying to keep the farmer's equipment going because corn harvest hit, soybean harvest hit, and milo harvest hit all at the exact same time here in the month of October. And all the ranchers are bringing in their cattle, trying to run them through the corrals. So I've been out putting corrals together, repairing them, all that kind of stuff too. That there looks like a geek. Oh, and uh, yeah, wheat planting. A lot of people were still planting wheat in October, so. Yeah, a lot was going on in the month of October for all the farmers out here. But anyway, you don't care about my excuses, so let's rewind a few weeks. I'll show you the making of these parts, which doesn't take very long, and then we'll come back and start drilling some holes in this part and slap this thing together. All right, so the other part of the die here, the side that will bolt to the two-way cylinder on the press that I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use rod shaft to push the metal so it comes down and bends it. That way I'll go around this nice edge here. And the reason I'm gonna use this shaft that's in my hand is this is something off of an old disc, you know, a disc plow and it is pretty hard stuff. So I think it can really handle the abuse. It's actually what I used on my bottle jack press to build the bottom die with is this stuff. And it holds up really, really well. Really can handle the abuse. So I'm gonna just cut it in half and it's gonna be a little bit close. I actually wish I had another inch of that stuff on there to do this with, but. So I'm taking it over to the chop saw, cut it in half. So these will come down like this. They probably need to be straight across there. Something like that. So basically, I'll have a little bigger piece than this that these rods shaft will pass through. Something like that. Drill holes in here, rods go through, and then this die will be like that. I'm hoping. That's my plan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zero that out, actually, I think. And then we'll go over uh, three and a half. Okay, so now I should have two center holes. And then I'll, uh, Keep working my way up to inch and a half. Actually, you know what? I don't know if I have an inch and a half drill bit. Oh, I don't know what I have to drill inch and a half hole. Whoop. Uh oh. Shaft. Long story short, I don't have a good way to drill inch and a half holes with my new milling machine. I'm going to have to make myself a boring bar, which is not in the scope of this video. If you want to see the build of that boring bar at the end screen of this video, there will be a way to click on something and take you over to the boring bar build video. In the meantime, let's just uh, use the boring bar I built and keep on making holes. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, it's just going nuts. Look at that. That's a heck of a chip now. Heck yeah. doing some measuring and going back over my sketches of how I want to do this. I think I'm going to use this three-quarter by four inch strap iron here, this flat. 
because if I set it up there, it'll be almost the center of the shafts there. And that'll hold it good. I really like that porta band. I need to get myself a nice bandsaw though for the shop. But boy, this porta band is really nice. I want the ends of this plate to actually be square because I plan on bolting the end caps to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the ends with an end mill here. That'll also allow me to find a zero on DRO because I'm actually cutting with the end mill so I can zero it out. And then I can locate the holes for the rods that this thing slides on real easy from that. I'm going to come over according to my DRO. I'm exactly where I want to be. So I'll drill a pilot hole here. Seven inches. Yeah, put this on the table already. Bonk. I hit ya. So the problem I need to address is on this design I put these tabs here so the bolt would be here and well it's all tight right now but it's like a three quarter inch hole in this plate and a half inch bolt in there so when I retract it's actually got some uh, slack in it so this plate will come away from this plate just a little bit I saw this design on some commercially made shears and presses and stuff and I thought it's a really good idea because it helps to save your rod if something gets in a bind. You know, if this twists for some reason, it helps keep this rod from twisting. But with the die that I'm building, I need it to just be on this plate here, the push plate. And I'm toggling back and forth between just making a new push plate, but I really don't want to swap this push plate just to swap dies that seems to defeat the purpose so is what I think I'm gonna do is actually cut these ears back off wow that's some serious penetration dang and put a bolt in from back here that goes in this way and then the bolt wouldn't have to be tight maybe have a bushing that goes in there too that it tightens onto that bushing um, so yeah I'll go ahead and put plan on using two bolts actually and uh, yeah that's what we're doing we're doing that that right there stuff get on with it Then I'm going to ream it out to 25, 30 seconds. That should give me about 30 thousandths of slop. A little bit over, except Dom is actually under 750 thousandths, so you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and reface the surface since I got all the dang grinder marks on it. Man, I had an amazing surface finish on this before when I made this part on the lathe. I'm really happy with that. This metal is machining amazing. It's nut 
is perpendicular to the shaft it screws onto. That is correct. And it's a machined face here designed to be true for that cylinder, right? So if I set it on that nut and bolt it down to this table, that should, in theory, make this face parallel that nut and the table and make sure that this thing is true to how it needs to be. So we will just skim a little bit off of this. Probably just use like a half inch end mill or something here and kind of root around on it for a little while. Just got done checking to make sure that these bolts fit in there and hold it on correctly, and they do. Just a little bushing is all I did, you know, parted the dom using the lathe and made a quick bushing, so. Yep, that'll hold that on there great. I'll probably put a washer on there first and then put it in there. So. That ought to work just dine and fandy. Well, I feel like I'm in the home stretch here. And just since I have a lot of footage, I feel like this video is probably going to be really, really long at this point. Um, you know what to do, right? Drill a couple holes, tap it, bolt this thing together. I'm not even going to show that step. All right, that's easy peasy. So I'll bring you back when I start welding these uh, shaft into those holes. I think you get the idea how these bolts work back here, but I'll show you just in case you don't know. As you can see, it slides forward and hits, and then when I return, it's actually got slack in there because it slides on that bushing. You see the die comes back. You see that slight amount of movement right there? That allows things to flex and move and do whatever they need to do. Okay, I'm ready to try this. I got a couple pieces cut out. Um, because I'm going to make another one of my shelf brackets here and I'm make a couple of these gate latches things. So, uh, yeah, let's see if this thing blows up. That's good. Pressure's low, we're still at 750 or so on pressure. I got still under a thousand on pressure. There, hit 1500, so I think we're just done with the bend. Wow, that was fast and easy. Uh, normally, this thing's sliding down, vibrating down the uh, rods won't be a problem because normally the press will actually be setting more like this so the weight of it will make it vibrate down to this end all the time if it does become a problem and it wants to you know constantly work its way back i can just put a little set screw in here somewhere and you know it's a little allen key to kind of give a little friction against the shaft not really lock it down hard just you know enough to keep it from sliding so not a big deal so now i'm going to bend these two plates i'm trying to decide if i want to do them both at the same time I kind of think I'm going to try it because the other one bent easy. I couldn't believe that. Low pressure. I was having trouble with a 20 ton bottle jack bending one of these by hand. That was a lot of force. This should be putting out about 18 tons of force. This is a four inch bore hydraulic cylinder. Uh, the pressure relief valve is set at about 2,500. So I can't remember, is that 18 or is that lower? Uh oh. I'm going to try two of them in here at the same time and see how much force that takes. Maybe I can yell the pressure at you and you can hear me. So that's a thousand, the PSI. Oh, I thought I'm going to slip it in there, was it? It's 1500 PSI. That is 2500 PSI. Well, I think it's bottomed out, isn't it? Yep, bottomed out. Uh, 
There we go. Man, that is so fast. Well, I might have a few hours in, you know, the making of this thing, but, but I can tell you what, I'm going to get those hours back so quick in the making of these things here. Man, that's just going to be phenomenal. Okay. Um, I'm going to go find me a piece of scrap iron because I want to bend a triangle like I was talking about in part one and show you why I built it this way instead of the other way. Well, I should have actually taken some time and drawn out the pattern, right? But seriously, try making that in a regular press, all right? Obviously, I'm gonna have to, you know, take this yeah, something apart and get it out of there, which is a little annoying, but considering I can actually do a shape like this, that's just incredible, if you ask me, right? I went ahead and just cut that off and I'm going to try to make this bend here and actually make the other bend. Probably need to do that one first I'll come back and bend this one. And that should give me a triangle. Let's see if I can do this. How many presses do you know that can do that? You know, if I did a little better job doing the layout, I just so excited to try this thing that I just, you know, bombed it, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, this is awesome. So, well, it's pretty cool. I can make triangles now. This thing is just awesome, YouTube. I'm tickled pink with this. Yeah. <laughs>